Welcome back, everybody. So what do we have here today? We have the Nike GT Hustle 3, um, a shoe that has gone through different names and obviously different uh, types of designs. The GT Hustle 3 is a shoe that, as Nike is putting it, is a data-driven shoe. Um, that's kind of what has driven the engineering for the GT Hustle 3. Um, and we see that in the way of cushioning and just material, material use, weight reduction, and things like that, um, and overall just performance as a whole. Um, before we get into this review though, if you can like, subscribe, um, and comment, it definitely helps the channel. Any type of engagement helps this channel grow, helps the video get exposure, and ends up in other people's feeds. But without further ado, let's get into this review. Starting with the packaging, as we always do, um, we have two colorways of the Nike GT Hustle 3 so far. We have the prototype colorway, which is in a stark white box, and then it has racer blue contrasting print all over the box itself. Um, and then you see that same racer blue on a stark white sneaker on, inside the box. Now, when you have the GT Hustle 3 in the electric pack, Nike did an electric pack for the start of the Olympics, and um, they kind of dressed up about 20 or so of their shoes in this safari print i mean and they went absolutely crazy with safari print all over the sneaker box all over the shoe now my biggest gripe with the uh, electric pack nike gt hustle 3 is the fact that it comes in at a premium price over the msrp of 190 dollars which is the prototype colorway it comes at a 15 dollar premium or 205 dollars us over the launch colorway now you may be asking yourself what do you get extra for that extra 15 dollars that you're paying and the quick answer is nothing you get no extra laces you get nothing extra in the box um, if anything if there's any consolation for this it's the fact that the sneaker box itself is dressed up in that uh, safari print again nike went absolutely crazy they dressed up the sneaker box itself in that safari print um, in commemoration of the Olympics. Now, moving on to the design of the Nike GT Hustle 3. The design is very different from its predecessor, the Nike GT Hustle 2. The GT Hustle 2 looked like what I would consider a normal, quote unquote, normal looking shoe. The Nike GT Hustle 3 kind of just revamps everything and Nike is really pushing this narrative of a data-driven sneaker. So you have an upper that is made entirely up of Flyknit technology, or as Nike calling it, uh, radio Flyknit. And this Flyknit technology is intended to improve containment, reduce weight, and obviously improve breathability. So obviously these are all great things for an athlete, especially when you're playing basketball. But in terms of design, the upper immediately reminds me of the Nike Flyknit Lunar Racer series from years and years ago. It just has that same shape when you look at that side profile. And I'll throw up a picture as B-roll, but immediately this design kind of reminds me of that. Now, the electric pack specifically has a, a, a bunch more going on than the prototype colorway, which is a very, very clean design overall. The Electric pack features, again, that safari print all over the upper of the shoe, all over the tongue of the shoe, and actually all over the midsole, and actually through that translucent outsole, you can see the safari print on the bottom of the shoe. So it's literally all over the place. And then you have uh, kind of the elephant in the room, the thing that you can't avoid, which is that volt colored um, exposed zoom unit on the lateral side. That's something that is obviously protruding. It is an, a massive outrigger and we'll get into containment and all that fun stuff later on. But in general, this Nike GT Hustle 3 is very reminiscent of the Flyknit Lunar Racers from back in the day. Um, it's probably not a bad thing and obviously the way Nike is utilizing that Flyknit technology, um, it's going to work to its advantage. Now moving on to the materials for the Nike GT Hustle 3. This is a shoe, as Nike is saying, is data driven, is data engineered. So this is a shoe that they use a lot of information and data that they collected from other athletes to build a shoe that was as light as possible, but also had the most amount of energy return. So they implemented uh, radio flyknit or what they're calling radio flyknit on that upper, as we mentioned earlier, and that's gonna increase breathabil breathability. It's gonna increase containment because it has flywire cables integrated with the, uh, the upper. Um, and then it actually reduces the weight dramatically. And we'll get into that in just a moment because that's actually one of the crazier things about this shoe. But overall, the materials, I wouldn't call them like premium raw materials, but they are premium materials overall. And that's probably why the shoe, um, in conjunction with the, uh, the cushioning, probably costs as much as it does. Now, we talked about the materials. We obviously have to talk about the weight. And this is probably one of the more technologically impressive things 
Nike has been able to do with the Nike GT Hustle 3. This shoe comes in weighing 15.4 ounces or 437 grams. Again, 15.4 ounces or 437 grams in a size 12 and a half. It is one of the lightest shoes I have tested this year. But when you look at this shoe, this shoe looks like it should weigh much, much more. It is a chunky boy, or at least when you, uh, you know, judge a book by its cover, which you're not supposed to do, but when you judge this book, it actually looks like it should weigh much, much more than what it does. So again, kudos to Nike for being able to just have this dramatic, reduction in weight but not compromise on the integrity of the shoe now over on the fit and containment side fit was a little bit wonky i'm going to be 100 percent honest um with the launch colorway prototype i ended up going with a size 12 and a half which my experiences with the gt line the gt jump the gt cut 2 the gt cut 3 and then the gt hustle 2 I actually ended up going with the 12 and a half just to be on the safe side and immediately getting them on foot. They were a little bit snug and, and I knew that playing in them, especially with that knit upper, they're going to conform to my feet just because that's what knit does, um, especially, especially the way it's engineered for this shoe. So I knew even though it started off a little bit snug, it's going to break in pretty quickly and it did. Um, I had no real issues with fit or anything like that and I went again with a half size up. Now, more recently, I ended up wanting to try out a size 13 just because I thought maybe if I went a whole size up, it would fit better. They didn't have a size 13 in my local Foot Locker. I went with a size 12, and much to my surprise, I got them on foot, and they fit what I would consider pretty perfectly. Um, again, my shoe size is a uh, size 12. These fit my feet extremely comfortably, and I don't know if it's an issue with Nike manufacturing or if there's inconsistent sizing amongst the different colorways, but the Nike GT Hustle 3 in this electric pack colorway in the size 12, my true size, fit almost perfectly. So if I'm making a recommendation in terms of fit, I would definitely say go true to size. If you want a little bit more room in the toe box, um, you're definitely gonna wanna go with a, a half size up, but I think going true to size, you should be pretty safe. It is, if it does, fit or start off, start off a, a little bit snug. You definitely want to play in them just a little bit. After a couple hours, they should break in pretty quickly and you should be okay going forward. Now over on the containment side, you have a shoe that's built for maximum containment for the athlete's foot. So this shoe features that radial flyknit, which uh, seems to kind of hug your feet in a good way and keep your foot on, on that footbed. But also in, in addition to that, you have fly wire cables that are actually integrated into the shoe. So you again have these fly wire cables literally hugging your feet. You have that knit pattern on the upper hugging your feet. And then you have this massive outrigger on that lateral side uh, zoom unit that's exposed. So you have the massive outrigger, you have fly wire cables, and then you have radial fly knit. So all of these things are meant to keep your foot on the footbed. And then there's no real instability when you're playing. So again, this shoe has maximum stability, maximum containment. I think this is a great shoe in that respect. Now, when it comes to cushioning, as I said earlier, Nike's intent with the Nike GT Hustle 3 was to use uh, information, data, data that they collected from other athletes to inform the design of the Nike GT Hustle 3. And what that brought them to was utilizing four different types of cushioning. Yes, four different types of cushioning in one shoe. And you again, when you think about that and you, you think about the fact that this shoe doesn't weigh much in the way because of the type of cushioning that they're utilizing, it's actually incredibly impressive. But either way, you have a double stack zoom unit in the forefoot, you have a full length zoom X insole all throughout the shoe, and then you actually have a React foam carrier that is actually going through the midsole of the shoe. So starting with that um, zoom unit that's exposed, obviously the elephant in the room, um, they're calling it a Mustang unit. I've never heard of Nike refer to any of their zoom units as Mustang units, and they've utilized this kind of a setup in their running shoes in the past, or at least some form of it. So they're calling it a Mustang unit, I assume they're calling it a Mustang unit because if you look at the bottom of the shoe, it looks like a horse's hoof. Um, so that's what my guess is. But either way, it's a Mustang zoom unit. But then you go in, inside the shoe, you have another zoom unit in that forefoot. So you're actually improving bounce. You're improving that, um, that energy return. On top of that, as we've talked about earlier, it features that ZoomX insole. ZoomX is a PBAX based foam. PBAX 
as a foam it has high energy return properties. So you have Zumex all throughout the insole and then you have that React foam. This is probably the only weak point of the cushioning setup that I could find. Um, upon getting this shoe on foot immediately, I, I don't know if it's a placebo effect or anything like that. I didn't really have a whole lot of information going into my testing. I just played without any real opinions or anything like that, but I did feel the energy return um, and I did feel more bounce when I was playing. I played incredibly well. Again, I don't know if it was the shoe or if I was just having a great day, um, but this shoe played incredibly well. Now, again, I talked about the React Foam as one of the weak points of this shoe, or at least for the cushioning setup. The React Foam just had a little bit of uh, instability because it was just a little bit too squishy for my liking. And so when I stood on the shoe, when I kind of like put my heel down, I felt my heel kind of shift around a little bit. And what that kind of told me is that there's a possibility maybe that shifting in the heel area could possibly weaken the Achilles tendon. And there's two things that I am incredibly scared of when I play basketball, which is tearing my ACL or tearing my Achilles. Um, and having that instability just kind of worried me a little bit. And I think they put the React foam there just for impact protection. But again, that's something to think about. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal, but it is something to keep in mind when you're playing in the Nike GT Hustle 3. Now, wrapping things up for the Nike GT Hustle 3 is the traction. The traction on the GT Hustle 3 was fantastic. It is featuring a radial pattern that goes throughout the entire shoe. Now, the colorway that I tested, the prototype colorway features a solid gum outsole and it played incredibly well. Never had to wipe and never had any issues with slipping or anything like that. On the electric pack colorway, um, it actually features a translucent outsole and I know that everyone's mileage may vary when it comes to translucent outsoles, but for me on the prototype colorway with that solid gum, gum outsole, they played incredibly well. Now, in terms of durability, they, they seem to be like a medium thickness rubber on the, um, on the outsole. So I think if you're playing on outdoor courts, you should be okay. But I think this uh, outsole, this rubber compound will wear down pretty quickly just because it isn't particularly thick, especially, especially in that traction pattern and in the treads itself. But overall, if you're playing on a hardwood court or some type of composite uh, court, you should be okay for the foreseeable future. Now, capping things off, my recommendation for the Nike GT Hustle 3. Um, this is an incredibly great shoe. This is a shoe that's probably more intended for um, bigger players, power forward centers because of the nature of the cushioning. Um, again, the cushioning is a double stack Zoom Air in the forefoot, Zoom X all throughout the insole, and then React as a carrier in the midsole. So it's maximum cushioning, which means you're not gonna get a whole lot of court feel. If you're looking for that court feel, this is not gonna be the shoe for you, but if you're looking for maximum cushioning, this is for you. Now, one of the reasons why I can't really recommend this shoe right now is because of the price point. At $190 for the MSRP US dollar, um, in that prototype colorway, that's actually on the higher end of the spectrum. That's actually getting to LeBron levels of uh, sneaker costs. So, you know, LeBron's line has always featured breakthrough technologies. It is always usually the state of the art for the industry, for at least for Nike. Um, but at $190, that is legitimately a premium price and it's a $20 premium over its predecessor, the Hustle 2. I believe that came in at $170. I was able to get that one at about $70. So if I'm making a recommendation, if you need to have this shoe, you're not gonna be disappointed because it is an incredibly fun shoe to play in. But if cost is a concern for you, I would say hold off. As we're heading into the NBA season, season you're gonna see more of this shoe, you're gonna see more colorways inevitably. And what that means is more colorways equals um, more stock. And if there's more stock on the shelves, that means better prices for consumers like us. So if you really need to have the shoe, get it. If you um, are really conscious about the price, hold off for a little bit, because these will inevitably go on sale and you're getting Nike's best technology in this shoe um, and probably is going to be kind of setting the standard for the sneaker industry at least for the foreseeable future. And that will just about wrap it up for this video. If there's anything I missed or anything you would like to know about the Nike GT Hustle 3, please leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.